Welcome to the Professional Actors Toolbox, Your Career. A guide to agents, unions, portfolios, and getting the part. The information you are about to learn is going to change your life as an actor forever. You'll learn terrific tips from seasoned actors and industry professionals that will help you take enormous steps to accelerate your career. In this video workshop, we'll discuss the ins and outs of the entertainment industry, as well as extraordinary tips that will help you grow as a performer. We hope you enjoy. If you want to be a professional in this industry and get the good paying gigs, you have to join a union. There are a lot of different kinds of unions in this industry that appeal to particular talents and productions. And there are five that are the most popular. Um, you've got AFTRA, the American Federation of Television and Radio. The members of this union include radio personalities, voiceover artists, uh, commercial actors, and talk show hosts. It's the easiest union to join. All you need to do is stop by your closest AFTRA office and pay the membership fee. Okay, and then you have Equity. Uh, the full name is Actors' Equity Association. And some people call it AEA. This union deals with stage. They represent both stage actors and managers. If you're a non-union performer and you're trying to get into equity, there's something called the Equity Membership Candidate Program. Now in this program, you'll work with participating theaters that'll hire you as a performer or a stagehand. Once you've worked for 50 weeks, you'll be eligible to join equity. Uh, another way to get into equity is by being a paid-up member of AFTRA or SAG who's worked once in a one-year period. And then you've got uh, the American Guild of Variety Artists. Some people call it AGVA, some people call it AGVA. This union deals with stand-up comedians, uh, magicians, singers, clowns, and other artists who perform in nightclubs, circuses, cruise ships, or parties. Um, the union's really easy to join. All you have to do is just pay the membership fee. Um, and then you've got SAG, Screen Actors Guild. This is the union everybody talks about. Actors want to be in SAG because SAG actors get all the good gigs. Um, the union has authority over all actors and extras that work in motion pictures, whether on the silver screen, television, or theater. Finally, there's Financial Core. And some people call it FICOR. Financial core is one of the best kept secrets in the industry. The Supreme Court and the National Labor Relations Board created financial core. It's a right that allows all union workers to not join the union and still work union jobs. Financial core status pertains only to union members. You'd have to join the union first and then declare financial core, not the other way around. After filling out the financial core application with your union, you can work both union and non-union gigs. And keep in mind, you must pay your original union's dues after declaring FICOR. What's great about FICOR is that members can negotiate their wage to be higher or lower than the union scale. The only real drawbacks are that even though you pay membership dues, you are not treated like a member. You're not permitted to run for union office, vote at union elections, qualify for union benefits, receive union newsletters and information, or attend award ceremonies or union meetings. What actors seriously need to consider before joining Financial Corps is, if you ditch your union, you are now depending on producers and agents to take care of you. If you try to sue a production company, the union will not back you up. If you want to rejoin the union later in life, you'll have to petition the union for membership and explain why you should be let back in. In most cases, unless you were signed into FICOR as a child actor, your membership renewal will be denied. SAG is the union that everybody talks about. It's the union where all the celebrities are a part of. Um, that's where all the big bucks roll in. And there are three ways you can get into SAG quickly. The first way is Taft Hartley, meaning you're a non-union actor who the producer loves. He or she casts you right away in his or her production. But because you're not a SAG member, now the producer has to send a report to SAG stating why he or she is in dire need of your talent. They have to have an excellent reason, though, more than just saying, oh, he's a really good actor. No, that doesn't work. Something about your appearance or a special skill or some reason why you have to take the place of a SAG actor who called out sick or is really, really late. The producer now pays the union expenses and boom, you're a SAG member. 
Taft's Hartley usually occurs in commercials, low-budget movies, and TV pilots. The second way to get into SAG is by doing non-union extra work. If you complete three days of extra work on one or more SAG projects, you are entitled to join SAG. Just make sure you get your SAG vouchers before you leave the set. Another way into SAG while you're an extra is performing a line of dialogue that is not in the script. This happens when a director decides to let a non-union extra blurt out a line during the shoot. The director will hire you that same day and have you sign a day player contract. Now, that doesn't really mean you can start screaming out lines if you're an extra. The director must give you permission. But it is not a good idea to hound the director for a line. If you do that, he's probably going to kick you off the set. Third and easiest, although slowest, way into SAG or equity is through parenting. As Aaron mentioned before, all you need to join AGVA or AFTRA is a little bit of cash. And once your membership is fully paid up and you've worked at least once under your membership, in 365 days, you are eligible to join SAG. But just keep in mind, SAG does have its own membership fee. Union precaution! If you are not in the union, most agents and managers will not even look your way. Non-union work can be a great opportunity to get more comfortable working on a production. Once you join a union, you are not allowed to do non-union work unless you declare financial core or FICOR when you're joining that union. Members caught doing non-union work are usually tossed from the union. There are some exceptions though. There's uh, exceptions that are theaters that have 99 seats or less, also known and called the Equity Waiver Theater. But before you do any non-union work, check with your affiliated union first. 